Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making a really easy anhydrous salicylic acid facial serum with just five ingredients. Formulating with salicylic acid can be challenging for beginners because you have to juggle solubility, pH, and preservation if there is water in the formulation. But since there is no water in this formulation, pH and preservation are no longer a concern. I got the idea to make an anhydrous salicylic acid formulation from The Ordinary. They sell a 2% salicylic acid product that quite piqued my interest. What is salicylic acid? Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid that is very popular in products designed to treat and prevent acne. Unlike alpha hydroxy acids like lactic acid or glycolic acid, beta hydroxy acid salicylic acid is oil soluble. And this means it's a lot better at hopping down into our pores and cleaning them out and preventing future clogs from forming. Salicylic acid also helps boost skin cell turnover. It's anti-inflammatory. It can help treat hyperpigmentation and it may have anti-aging effects. As lovely as salicylic acid is, it can be irritating, which is why I've kept the concentration for this formulation low and why I recommend introducing it into your skincare routine slowly. If you'd like to learn more about salicylic acid, I highly recommend the Simple Skincare Science blog post on it. I'll link to it in the partner blog post. And as a final note, if you are allergic to aspirin, salicylic acid is not for you. Let's get making. We're going to make a 20 gram batch of this formulation today, which is just shy of one fluid ounce. This doesn't seem like much, but it's a good starting size if you're new to using salicylic acid. You will want to add it to your routine fairly slowly, starting with two to three applications a week, so 20 grams should last you at least a month. We'll begin by weighing out the first two ingredients for the formulation and dissolving the salicylic acid. Make sure you are wearing a mask and gloves for this part of the formulation, as salicylic acid is both potent and floaty. You'll need 0.2 grams of powder powdered salicylic acid, which is 1% of the overall formulation. Mine was a gift from Essential Wholesale. Salicylic acid is a restricted ingredient in Canada with a maximum cosmetic usage level of 2%. You can modify this formulation to use up to 2% salicylic acid, but I recommend sticking to 1% to start with. If your skin tolerates that well, you can always make a stronger batch later. If you increase the concentration of salicylic acid in this formulation, you will also need to increase the concentration of its solvent, octyl dodecanol. For example, if you increase the salicylic acid from 1 to 1.5%, you would need to increase the octal de decanol from 10 to 15 percent and then you'd need to reduce the olive squalane that appears later in the formulation by 5.5 percent that amount that we added to the salicylic acid and the octal de decanol just to keep everything adding up to 100 percent you'll need two grams of octal de decanol this is the solvent for the salicylic acid used at a very handy 10 to 1 ratio octal de decanol is an oil soluble liquid fatty alcohol that's a lovely emollient it's non-volatile and will not dry out your skin. It's different from alcohols like ethanol and isopropyl alcohol that people often try to avoid in skincare. One of the challenges in formulating with salicylic acid is its solubility. It's really just not very soluble. In room temperature water, it's only about 0.2% water soluble. It's about 14% soluble in pure ethanol, 3 to 6% soluble in propylene glycol, and 1.6% soluble in vegetable glycerin. This means if you wanted to make a 1% salicylic acid formulation and use glycerin as your solvent, that formulation would need to be 62.5% glycerin to dissolve just 1% salicylic acid. Octal dodecanol is really rather special. Salicylic acid is 15 to 20% soluble in it. So compared to glycerin, you'd only need about 6.75% octal dodecanol to make a 1% salicylic acid solution. You'll notice I've used a bit more than that in this formulation so that we have a 1 to 10 ratio of salicylic acid to solvent to make it easy for you to adjust the formulation if you want to use more salicylic acid. If you are looking for alternatives or just to learn more about formulating with salicylic acid, please refer to the completely free partner blog post over on my website, linked in the description box below. I've linked to some further reading to help inspire your experiments and formulating work, and the partner blog post also contains a coupon code for the salicylic acid. Combine the salicylic acid and octal dodecanol in a small beaker and stir to combine. You'll want to gently heat the mixture to speed up the dissolving process. I once left this to sit overnight and the salicylic acid didn't fully dissolve in over eight hours. So yeah, 
speed it up a bit. I'm using my hot plate set to its lowest setting, but you could also use a water bath. While the salicylic acid dissolves, we'll weigh out the rest of our ingredients. You'll need 17.4 grams of olive squalane. If you wanted to customize the formulation, you could swap out some of the olive squalane for a carrier oil that you love. Whatever you choose, I do recommend choosing something quite light and fast absorbing. 0.2 grams of tocopherol acetate helps reduce inflammation, accelerate healing, and condition the skin. While 0.2 grams of bisabolol adds some lovely anti-inflammatory properties to the formulation, helping to counter any irritation you might get from the salicylic acid. If you don't have bisabolol, you could replace it with a soothing oil-soluble botanical extract like chamomile or calendula extract. And if you'd like to learn what essential oil bisabolol is derived from, make sure you look it up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. Once the salicylic acid has dissolved and you have a completely clear solution, we are ready to add the last three ingredients to our serum. Pour the olive squalane, tocopherol acetate, and bisabolol into your salicylic acid solution, stir to combine, and that is it. For packaging, I'm using a couple 10 milliliter airless pump bottles from Yellow Bee that were gift. You could also use a bottle with an eyedropper top or a treatment pump cap. To use, apply a few drops of the serum towards the end of your skincare routine after cleansing and after using more watery products. Start with just two to three applications a week and work your way up to daily use, making sure you are paying attention to your skin. If your skin is doing well, you can work up to using it twice daily. You can also increase the concentration of the serum. Just be sure to go slowly and make sure you are listening to your skin. If you'd like to learn how to make the brightening serum I am using directly before using this serum, click here. And if you would like to learn about one of my favorite skincare actives, niacinamide, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.